Hi everyone, we're going to take a look at one of the most difficult types of questions that you'll find on your GCSE Health and Social Care exam paper and that's the questions where you have been asked to interrelate. Often you'll find that these questions have between six and nine marks so it can make a real difference if you manage to gain the majority of those marks. First thing that I always ask you to do is to get the hump remember what this means, highlighting keywords, understanding what you've been asked to do, look at the number of marks awarded and then plan your answer. So let's scroll down and have a look at this particular question. So we've got a case study and we need to think about highlighting keywords. So we've got an adult male who did well at school and is now studying at university to be an architect so the fact that he is studying that could be a positive okay so let's highlight that in green he's finding the work difficult and he struggles to keep up that's something that's quite relevant it's a negative we're going to highlight that in red Bob does not eat a balanced diet oh dear and um, he's snacking but he does take regular exercise so again, that's a positive. So we can see already that we've got a balance of positive and negative factors. Let's go through. He split up with his girlfriend. Could be a good thing or a bad thing. Let's pretend he's sad about that. And he's worried that he may not find another. He enjoys sharing a flat with four of the students. Okay so that's good he enjoys that but there's not much space available cramped conditions so what have you got to do then okay if we go back up here understand what you've been asked to do with this case study so we've done this we're now going to understand what you've been asked to do you've been asked to explain how the different factors in Bob's life may interrelate to affect his health well-being and development so that is our keyword. So you've got to think about interrelating what does that actually mean. So thinking about what the term interrelate means, you remember seeing this image in class. It gives you the rules for interrelating. You've got to link factors together. So for example, you may link two positive factors together or even three if you can find three. You have to link together negative factors or alternatively, you may link a positive factor with a negative factor and explain how they balance. You've got to identify the area of pies that these factors will affect. Now it's no good thinking about the effect of the individual factors you've got to link them together, roll them into one and give an outcome. If you deal with the factors separately and simply say what the impact of that factor will be, you will reduce the number of marks that you'll be able to gain. So let's have a think about how we might link factors together when we are interrelating. We might say, for example, um, he finds the work difficult and struggles to keep up and he is living in a small flat where there's not much space available. Okay, so we've got two negative factors there and we need to think about how they may link together, what the effect of those will be. Now we're looking to our next part of getting the hump, which is the marks awarded, and we can see that there are nine marks available. So I would be suggesting that to get the very top band of marks you need to be making at least four threads four sets of links whether they be positive negative or mixed and thinking about the impact going back down here you've got to think as well about the area of pies that will be affected by the thread so is it a physical impact, is it an emotional impact, social or intellectual? There's lots of things to remember with these interrelate questions which is why they are the hardest ones on the paper. But the rules are to go through, to link your factors, 
to identify the area of pies that will be affected and to say what the impact is. And when you say the impact, make sure that you roll it together all as one. Now let's have a go and do this question. So let's get started. Let's check. We've highlighted keywords. We understand that we have to interrelate. We know that we've got nine marks, so we're going to be at the very best looking for at least four threads. And then we're going to plan our answer. Now the way that I would suggest you do this is using the margins of your work. Think about pies. So I would perhaps up at the top physically write on your exam paper P, I, E and S and start to jot down some of the links that you can see. Because it's quite a complicated question it can be a complicated plan that you put down. But if you can just jot a couple of things down as they come to mind it might just be for example the threads that you immediately spot and whether or not they are categorised as P, I, E or S within pies, then that's a good starting point and it will make sure that you don't miss anything off. So let's imagine that we've done that because it's quite difficult for me to show you that using a Word document. Let's think about the first thread that we are going to consider. The first one that jumps out at me is this one here, not eating a balanced diet tending to snack but he does take regular exercise at the gym. So don't make the mistake of regurgitating the question you won't have much space and you'll simply waste space if you try and rewrite the question. So what we could say is um, although Bob does not eat a balanced diet he does exercise oh spelling mistake regularly and so the negative impact of his um unhealthy diet will be offset by the exercise he does. Um, now then, we've not thought about pies, so this is a physical impact and will help to ensure his weight remains stable. Okay, so we've linked a positive and a negative. We've given the area of pies that it relates to and we've given an impact. Okay, quite a simple one albeit, but nevertheless we've done everything that we've been asked to. We've linked factors, we've identified the area of pies this will affect and we've said what the impact will be. Okay, so that is one thread complete. So let's look for another thread. Bob has recently split up with his girlfriend and he's worried that he may not find another. However, what we do know is that he goes to the university gym with friends and also that he enjoys sharing a small flat at the university with four other students. So we've got a good thread there and we've got a number of factors that we can include. So we could say Bob has recently finished my spelling today is all over finished with his girlfriend. However He has social support from his friends who he shares a flat with and socialises 
at the gym. This positive social aspect offsets the negative impact of him being single and should raise his self esteem and confidence right so here we are we get it in at least once in every question self esteem and confidence really really important okay so let's see what have we done here we've linked together three factors we have said how it will impact upon him and we've identified that it's social okay so we've done everything that we need to there okay let's look for one more we haven't discussed the fact that Bob finds the work difficult and struggles to keep up yet so that would be a good one to try and link we can see that this is an intellectual factor and it links quite nicely here with the fact that he's got additional worry about his social life with his relationship having finished and also we could link it into the fact that there's not much space available within the flat that he shares which could I suppose link to the fact that he's struggling to keep up maybe if it's not an environment that he can work in or that he can have much privacy in that might impact now what we mustn't do is what I refer to as the Jeremy Cowell show where we talk about the fact that the other students he shares with are constantly throwing parties and keeping him awake don't make the case study into something it's not it's very tempting to do that to try and prove your point but we haven't been told that and we're not going to get any marks if we go down the Jeremy Cowell route so let's think about what we can do here we could maybe say um, because Bob finds the work difficult and what you might be tempted to do now is say his self-esteem and confidence will be lowered but that would be dealing with this factor on its own and you don't get any marks for that because it's not interrelating it with another factor so because, because Bob finds the work difficult and has a small living space shared with others he may find that he struggles to study and intellectually he may feel as if he is not um, succeeding okay the emotional impact of this is lowered self-esteem and confidence in his intellectual abilities okay so we've got that one in again we've got pies we've linked those two factors together <coughs> we could see maybe think about adding a fourth factor in what could that possibly be we could maybe think about this positive factor here the fact that um, he's studying at university and he's quite proud of that factor and that could balance the fact that um, he is struggling maybe um, perhaps a better link would be that he's studying at university he's proud of that fact and he enjoys sharing a flat because socially being able to go to university has benefited him um, so not just the intellectual impact but also the social impact 
of making new friends. That would be a good fourth. So finally, let's check that we've not made the common mistakes. The first common mistake is to deal with factors separately. If we go up and we look, an example of that would be if I were to say he's finding the work difficult and struggles to keep up, therefore his self-esteem and confidence are lowered. This is a emotional impact. Okay, that would all be true, but you've not linked this with anything. Okay, so we've not done that. We have made links of two or three threads. We've linked, um, another problem is to link factors together but then deal with the effect separately. So, in effect, you're just dealing with the factors individually if you deal with the effects separately. So there would be no marks for that. We haven't done that, we've rolled them into one. Third common mistake is only focusing on positive or negatives, not a mixture. Well, if we look up here, the fact that we've colour coded them has helped us to try and link them together and we have talked about offsetting. Okay, so on the one hand this, on the other hand that. What we've done there is we've balanced the positives with the negatives. So we're okay there. And ignoring positive and negative counterbalancing effects. Well, as we just said, we've done that. Okay, so that's that's not a bad attempt with the fourth um, thread. I think that that would hopefully score in, in top band. And we've got our nine marks there. One of the things that you will be asked to do for this sort of question would be to um, make sure that your spelling, punctuation and grammar is sound. Okay, so you need to have a look through and make sure that everything is as it should be. It's probably easier when you're writing, um, not having the dreaded spell checker changing things or fingers like sausages hitting the wrong keys but there we are so the most difficult sort of question um, but if you follow the rules for interrelating and get lippy and you also get the hump hopefully you'll do as well as you can good luck <laughs>